Broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studios in Phoenix, Arizona, it's time for Phoenix Business Radio, spotlighting the city's best businesses and the people who lead them. Hello and welcome to Phoenix Business Radio, broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studio inside Max 6 Workspace and the Conscious Capitalism Arizona headquarters in Tempe, Arizona, where we help build businesses and connect you with the right people. I'm your host and Phoenix Business Radio CEO, Karen Nowicki, and I'm very excited to have two professionals here with me today, one coming in to us via Skype and the other here sitting right next to me. Therese Skelly is back in the studio with us again. Uh, Therese is a mentor, I would say mentor extraordinaire. I'll take it. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah. Yep, so happy to have you. Thank you. And Therese uh, was kind enough to introduce us to Julie Fouch. She is the founder of uh, excuse me, founder of the Art of Feminine Marketing and Julie Fouch Coaching. Welcome to the show, Julie. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. We are thrilled to have you. So to be completely candid, we attempted this, I think it's been a couple weeks ago, right. and we had Loren uh, North on with us as well. She's a personal stylist here in the Valley, and our internet went down in the building that day, and we lost Julie, and she was gracious enough to say, yes, let's give it a go again. And so the three of us are back, and I just really am looking forward to sharing with our listeners a little bit about who you are, who you're serving, and then really how the two of you have come to work with each other. So, Julie, since we have you via Skype and uh, you're connecting with us uh, from California, right? I am. I'm on the Central Coast. So, beautiful, temperate day. Almost fall here. We're, we're, wow. we're into Indian summer. But, <laughs> fall. What's, yeah. what's what fall? What is that? <laughs> my, my husband said this morning, he's like, I think he was listening to the radio or something, and there was that first, you know, pumpkin spice commercial on. And he's like, oh, no, it's that time of year. And I said, oh, yes, it simply means that in two more months for us, or maybe even three, we'll finally have autumn weather. But you, I love to hear that you are getting closer to that already. So, Julie, tell us about the art of feminine marketing and all about your coaching. And, you know, I say all about, we've got 60 minutes. Let's start us off and then we'll have Therese give an introduction to herself as well. Yeah. Yeah, if you tell me, tell you all, I'm just going to like take the whole hour. <laughs> Good, we'll <laughs> sit back. <laughs> <laughs> you sit back, do nothing. Um, so the art of feminine marketing is really about breaking the old paradigms of business. It's about doing things in a way that is um, natural for women and natural for women's rhythms. So rather than being in the business paradigm of, okay, I have to work from from 8 to 5 p.m. And because I'm an entrepreneur, I have to work from 8 to 8 p.m. And I have to drive, drive everything, which is very masculine. Feminine marketing looks at, okay, what are your natural rhythms? What are your rhythms as a woman? What are the rhythms of your business? And we take time to go inward and reflect. We take time to be in the dream space. And we, we use that inner space to create the energy to take action. So it's a very in- inside first towards the outside way of running a business versus the outside in here's a formula apply it and and if you don't have success with it there's something wrong with you model that we've been fed for the last i don't know how many 50 years this is not a cookie cutter approach this is really customized and it's customized because each and every one of us is different. Each and every one of us has developed over our lifetime a different skill set. Each of us is here to serve a particular purpose and you cannot do individualized, customized work from a cookie cutter place. So the formulas are important, like knowing how to Knowing how to push the buttons to make a radio show work is really important. But if every single one of your guests said exactly the same thing, it would be super boring. It's a great example. Really good. Rhythms. So when you mention rhythms and you're describing the business and the work that you do, I'm thinking uh, the first thing that came to mind is uh, like my my menstrual cycle and my body and and that kind of thing and and then uh, then I kind of had this visual of uh, the ocean the ebbs and flows of the water and seasons and all of that can can you help explain why the word rhythm makes so much sense with the work that you do with the, those professionals and and of course clean up <laughs> the visuals that I had <laughs> <laughs> well I think the visual you had is really appropriate 
you know, we see this and we can follow it in the cycles of the moon. You know, there's a full moon. It's very energetic. Um, There's a lot that they say in hospital wards, all the crazies come out in the full moon. It's because the energy is up and there's a lot of energy. And if we take advantage of that point where our energy is up, if that's when we are launching products, if that's when we're launching programs, we're going to be much more effective than we wait until our internal moon is down and everything's dark. And it's, crun- and nobody it's can crunchy. It. Yeah, it's hard, isn't it? It's crunchy. It's hard. That time, and, and a lot of women can actually follow that moon cycle energetically. Um, some of my clients are kind of off from the moon cycle, but um, I tend to, to try when I'm doing a launch, I try and launch during the full moon because there's so much more energy I can put into it than if I'm doing it during a dark moon. I also notice that I have a lot less energy during a dark moon. And so that's a rhythm. Then we have the rhythm of the year. So a lot of my clients right now are coming into fall and they're feeling like, you know, this is cave time. This is time for me to start planning next year. This is time for me. I'm really weird here. Coming into fall, I get energized. And so for me coming into fall, I'm like doing a ton of launches. I'm planning a live event. I'm doing a lot of work. So that um, because this is a time when my energy is high. Now, I know this because I've been in business a long time. So I plan to take most of July and August off. I go really low key in August. And in July, well, in July, we have what's called Grammy camp at our house. (laughs) (laughs) Where we have multiple small grandchildren who stay for a while up to a week. So, you know, those are our time periods where I know that in my planning, I'm going to plan less in my business because that's my rhythm. And I know that come, you know, the turning of the weather, the colder mornings, I know that then my energy is going to pick up so I can plan more. And it makes life so much easier than just trying to plow through the periods where I'm not energetic. I'm fascinated Isn't by this. Cool? Co- it's yeah. so cool. I'm fascinated. I'm, I'm interested in the process and how you kind of unearth or uh, discover what everybody's rhythm is, because clearly we're all slightly different. It sounds like there's some baselines and some processes in which you can discover that. I, I'm looking forward to hearing more. Uh, let's bring Teresa into the conversation as well. I would love for you to share, obviously, with our listeners, who are you as a mentor and a guide and and how did you get here? Wow. Thank you for that. And it's really fun to have my friend Julie here because we we collaborate a lot. We actually were on a call earlier today teaching some some clients, her clients, and it's it's delightful. And I loved being back with you. Thank you it's so fun, much. Fun, so, fun. So my journey, I started out as a psychotherapist and I moved into being a life coach and I went to a networking group one day back in like 2003 or four and I got on their newsletter and they had an ad that said business coaches wanted and the crazy part, and I always tell this story because I think it's really instructive. The crazy part is while I had like, I have a, I worked in prisons. Like right? I worked, I was, I have a master's in counseling, an undergrad in criminal justice. So I was a prison guard. Probably not a lot of your, like, your, I did your, not your guests know that. say that. I had the brown polyester suit. My nickname was Piggy Punk because it was in the 80s and I did have the Pat Benatar spiky hair, right? right? Piggy so, Punk. I love it. Piggy Punk. That was my nickname from the, from the inmates. They loved me. Anywho, the, I, I just digress. So my point is though, I had no business no no business looking to be in business. I didn't understand it. I had never read a business coach, um, business book. I'd never taken a business class. And yet there was something about that ad that just grabbed me. Now, Julie and I intersect a lot. We would say, or I would say, that was my soul. That was like the energy of that ad. So it's, so part of the, the work we both do in our different ways, but very similar is it didn't make logical sense but I followed the energy. And at that time I was much younger and I didn't understand about energy. But for some reason, my little fingers are on the keyboard and I'm going, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. And then the next day they hire me and I'm like, holy crap, talk about imposter syndrome, right? I'm like, and then I was given just like a list of leads, call, get them to sign up for your coaching. And so 
it was a really hard entry. It was really like, abrupt, like, an abrupt like entry. throwing myself into the bottom of the pool with, I think I had little water wings, right? So I had some floaties because I, I was working for a really good coaching company. So I had really good support and really good training. But along the way, I learned what I ultimately was going to teach because my audience and I'm a, I'm a service-based business owner, right? I sell my service. So when you are the what's up for sale, whoo, that's when your issues are going to just bite you in the head, right? And so being a therapist, on one hand, it was a blessing and a curse because while I had like a lot of skills, I'd practiced for 20 years, I also couldn't figure out what I, I didn't know what I didn't know and I couldn't solve my own problems. I didn't know how to own my value. I didn't know how to talk about what I did. I didn't know how to my God, sell anything. Like, whoa, and today I teach selling. I was just going to say, <laughs> how great is that? Exactly. Mm-hmm. And so I took all of that, like I was what I'd say, basically the accidental entrepreneur. So I had to learn like, wow, how do you do this? How do you from scratch, especially if you're like a really big hearted, mission driven person who wants to make a difference, what's going to happen is you're going to get into codependent patterns. You're going to undercharge and overgive and overwork. So I, I did all that as well. And so it's just been a journey of understanding my process. And I I know now know like, oh, you're going to need this, 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 this. And so what I do, like I used to be a marketing consultant. I used to do much. Julie does more marketing today. I have that background. I was a business coach for since 2004 or whatever. But I've shifted now to work with the inner game. I work with like, I just got off the phone with my clients. And so I'll give you an example. We raised her rates. And she came to me and said, this is so weird. I just had six sales calls and I, I, I couldn't sell anything. And I know because I've taught her selling. I know how good she is. So what I did is I just go, okay, let's figure out what the block was. And so I went to the inner game. I went to, I found the energy of that. I found the age of that. I found the decision of that. I found the fraud part of her. I found all these things that most people can't ever find. And so instead of working on what people are doing, like the strategy and the tactics, I work on who you're being. And how you show up. Because when I can find that and flip that, the sky's the limit. And I know this firsthand. You do. <laughs> you were my guinea pig. Oh, my gosh. It, I, was, I wasn't a guinea pig. I know. You were my blessed, blessed um, yeah, demonstration cause, subject. Because clearly you've, <laughs> you've been doing this a long time. And I I feel like it was such a gift. And I don't know, Julie, if, if Therese shared that with you. Uh, we you've sent shared it on social media, yes, and yes. we did speak about it in the last segment we had with Loren. But I think it's worth sharing again. Uh, we've been social media pals for a long time, but have never met in person. So we finally did several weeks ago over lunch, and we were just talking about you know business and the success as well as the lows and how are we shifting and what's going on. And I'm an open book, and I, I sense that both of you are too. Absolutely, yeah. and I know yes. that you expect that and have to trust that with your clientele. Otherwise, you can't really help them come from the inside out, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and and that's how I function as well. So within minutes, I'm kind of sharing about some of my struggles uh, around the um, the financial growth of the studio. And, and even though I've done tons of work around this piece, and I'm talking <laughs> years of therapy, uh, I'm actually an integrated coach myself. I've trained and coached other coaches. I've got my own clientele, blah, 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 blah. I've been there. I've done the work. And, and you were so great, Therese. You're like, hey, would you be willing to just mm-hmm. do a couple minutes of, of work so I can demonstrate and show you, give you an idea of, of how this works with my clients? Because it's very quick, mostly. It's very quick. Very quick. Yeah. I'm like, hey, I'm game. We're at a restaurant. There's <laughs> of people around. And sure enough, you've got this beautiful, I'm going to call it a pendulum. It's a pendulum. A right. pendulum. And you just took it out. You asked me a couple of heartfelt questions. Um, sitting across from each other at the table, I just, I really wanted to land and be present with myself first, but also you. I noticed you were doing the same. And within just a couple moments, you asked me a couple of questions. You were, you could help me feel where it was or discover where it was in my body. Mm-hmm. We released some old, old stuff that in your words, I think you said wasn't even really mine. Yeah, that's the weird part is a lot of times the blocks we have, and and most people don't know these things, right? So lots of times we carry <clears throat> limiting beliefs, we carry pain, we carry maybe energy from our ancestors, we carry trauma. I mean, I, I worked with a woman just this morning, uh, the, like what happened, what was your, in, when you were in utero, what was going on? Because we are imprinted with either what was happening in our family or with our mother or in the household. And so all that stuff is living in us, totally affecting us. So for you, 
we found it. And even though you knew the incidents, you knew the cause, it was a, a place you could never access yourself. And, and I'm, I would say it's a, a, an energy field. Mm-hmm. Is that how you would describe it? Energy, yeah. yeah. No, I'm not a field because it's, it's, how would I say it? It's just, it, sometimes I, it can be like a thought form, like women can't make enough, mo- can't make money. That's just not maybe an energy. So sometimes people can say, oh my gosh, it's black. It's this thing in my throat. So they can, it depends how people describe it. Similar so, to the work that Julie does. There's, yeah. It's not one, one size fits right. all. Not it's all. you just have to be present with right. that individual and help them work through it. Yeah. Uh, so since then, I've had yeah. several clients. Uh, that was one of the struggles I was having come on, coming off a little, a little summer hiatus as well, an intentional <laughs> hiatus. Uh, and within uh, just a couple of days, already mm-hmm. had several new clients and I was like, right. wow, okay. And at first I was like, well, what's happening here? And <laughs> within about a minute realized that it was the work we had done together. Wow. And then there was some energy, or I'll use the word energy, around uh, just my husband and I and the possibility of going to business with each other. And so much of that has lifted and continues wow. to lift since then. And the way in which I'm standing in our relationship, uh, both my re- responsibility here owning the studio, but also with Mike making his decisions, it's this whole new, oh yeah, this whole new side of me. So Thank I appreciate you. both of you giving me an opportunity to speak very specifically to the work that we did together. Because again, listeners, it was, I think it could have been more than five to seven minutes. Right, right. And, and so yeah. th- that's really what's so great about you as a mentor and a guide We cut out all the bullshit. Mm -hmm. We cut through all the story. We cut through all this other stuff to get to the heart of the matter. Well, and here's the thing, and this is what I love. And thank you for sharing that story because I didn't know the second part. I didn't know. Because what I know is, you know, my clients come to me and they'll say, you know, I came so you could grow my business, but you saved my life or you saved my marriage or I just lost 20 pounds or I'm a better mom. Like it ripples, right? And so what you said, and this is so typical of the women I work with, and it just breaks my heart you know this. And you have spent probably boatloads of money trying to solve it. Years and And, boatloads And you're a hard worker and you're really smart. And like, why aren't you getting what you want, right? And there's a pain in that. It's like, God dang it. What? There's like a helplessness or a hopelessness or like, ugh. I I know that myself, right? I go to Julie for for this and Julie comes to me for this. Like we we work on each other. I was going to ask. Yeah, we do. We'll come back to that for sure. For sure. But, But it's just like, it's so maddening when when you've paid all the money and you've tried, and they're, they're like, like, what else do I do? And I can, that's my superpower. I can wow. come in and go, Pew! that's what it is. And so I love the stories of like, boom, and it worked. Yeah. So thank you for yeah. sharing that. For sure. So you two have worked together for a while. You share clients, but you also have independent businesses and, and separate clients as well. Uh, when Therese describes that you two can do that for each other, Julie, from your perspective, how does that benefit you personally and professionally? And what do you love about working with Therese specifically? Oh, I love that question. So I honestly believe that you can't see inside your own fishbowl, you know? And so for me to have someone who's able to look on the outside and go, hey, check your, you're screwing up over here or um, that doesn't seem quite in alignment or, uh, you know, for me to come to her and, and be able to say, I'm not making sales on this product. What's going on? And she can pinpoint it for me. That is priceless. And I think that what she and I have developed together is, um, those of you on the radio can't see, but I'm like using my hand yeah, a lot. It. We're getting we excited are. here. We all are. <laughs> Soapbox, baby. <laughs> I'm like, boom. Um, but we have created community and what has happened to women in the society is we become isolated, right? Um, and, and there are communities where we're not supported in this way. And we have to create these communities where we have mentors and where we have uh, sisters that we can go to and say, I'm stuck in this area. I'm really good at what I do and I could do this for somebody else, but I can't see it inside myself. And so can you check from your angle what's going on and give me a different viewpoint in? So I think that's really important. I think what Therese and I have created, by the way, Therese and I met as every good friendship (laughs) starts. We were at an event. Every bathroom break, we stood in line. We were together. in harmony. How funny! Over and over again, you over were same, and over for same three r- days. Same rhythm. Same three bathroom days rhythm. Every yeah, time, we or we're like, we actually have selfies days. from the bathroom because that so is our yeah. funny. Yeah, 
Um, but we, we began to create this community. And it's so important to me, the work that Therese does is I bring her into my coaching program. This is not done. You are not, you are taught, do not bring people who do the same thing as you into your community. But I actually hire her to do it. And I think this is the new feminine way of doing business is that we are not competitors. We are not in competition with each other. My clients are my clients, her clients are her clients. But you know what? My clients gain a lot from having another set of eyes, from having another skill set here. I do similar work to her. I do it a little differently than she does. And so they get the benefit of both. And I get to feel really, um, I get to brag, (laughs) which I think is a great skill for women to have. I get to brag that I bring the best people in the business to work with my clients so that they have the biggest growth in the time period they're with me. Well, can I tell the story of what happened at your event? I know that's like, um, wait, what happened? I, yeah. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll just tell the story. Say which time? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so the last couple of years, Julie hosts a fabulous live event she'll be telling you about, but it's the Art of Feminine Marketing. It's three days in Monterey and it is so amazing. It's not just a pitch fest. It is so deep. I mean, it is, oh my gosh, this woman can hold a room. Like her skills are just over the top. And so she brings me in for two purposes. Number one, to support her, three purposes, to support her, and also to basically, if there's a client that's that's fallen apart or ha- or is stuck, Julie is so intuitive, she'll like literally just go, come here, Therese. Now think about that. You're an expert. And to have the confidence and the trust to say, I'm going to pass this over to another expert. You know, the old paradigm is like, oh no, they're going to like her better. Oh, she's going to take the business. And so, and then I also give a presentation that I, then I teach sales to her people. So what happened is, Julie was working with a woman and I could feel it going south, like so south, like, cause normally like this woman is impeccable and she, she, I, I mean, I, I, I trust her with myself. Like she's, you know, we coach each other. So she's so good. And she was complete. I'm just like, and I tried to silently like, like do sign language, like what the hell, Julie? Ah, ah. <laughs> and I finally just, just gently go, I'm wondering if the, I try to make a little, a little like, hey, you might want to, and Julie smartly called it. She's like, okay, well, let's just take a break. And I walk her outside and I'm like, what the hell happened to you? And what I love about Julie, she's like, I got super triggered. I'm, I'm so triggered. I, and I'm like, yeah, cause you missed, like this woman is in a massive hole. She's in a wound and Julie's being a cheerleader. And so what was cool is we stand outside and I bring my pendulum and in five minutes, we discover that, well, I don't know the thing, but whatever that was, how Julie was being triggered. So then the brilliance of Julie, she came back in the room and said, I apologize to you because I missed it. And I was trying to do this and you needed this. Let me do it over. And owned it. Owned it. And spoke to it, cleaned it up. Yes. yes. And everybody in that room benefited. And that is feminine marketing. That's how we work. Instead of an expert, because there's a lot of posturing. There's a lot of, I can't, you know, Julie and I are really real. Like our our messaging is very transparent and authentic. And so for her to stand from, and for her to let me just go, good Lord, woman, <laughs> you missed it. And her to receive that. And for her to bring, bring me there to honor her to do that. Like that's the magic. I think more women, more experts need that. There's so many pieces of this before I get my hands on it. <laughs> Julie, I would love for you to share from your perspective uh, or anything to add to what Therese just shared as, as she gave us that example. Yeah, I think that I want to be completely transparent here. And there are moments when I'm bringing her in to do this work where I, I do have the oh, no, they're going to like her better mm-hmm. than me. Sure. And um, there were moments when my ego in that example she gave, like my ego was like, oh, I'm so embarrassed. I'm going to crawl away. I want to ignore it. But for me, the, the bottom line is how am I being of service, right? right? And when I'm in that space, the, the complete transparency of I blew it, let's redo this and make it right. Now, I wouldn't have had the opportunity to do that if I hadn't had Therese in the room. And so bringing her into the room, again, it's like when you're making soup and you put parsley in it, you get one flavor. If you make a roux, 
<laughs> like if you do the butter and the flour and you brown it and it's so much ri- richer. So Trace, you're the root to I'm my the root. Oh, 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 thanks, I love baby. It. <laughs> and how, so, so I've done a lot of conferences. I've led a lot of them. I've done intensive weekends with men and women, women alone. And the best ones that I've either attended as a participant as a, or as a co-facilitator or done on my own, I've had someone like the one of you watching my back and supporting me. And that just gives me tingles from head to toe because it helps us not only stand the space of our brilliance as you're describing, and we're also human. And so when we're trying to be and serve a lot of different purposes Mm -hmm. in that space, sometimes we land in our head or somewhere and and we can't easily catch that. Mm -hmm. So how great that you are that for each other. And to your point, Julie, your participants, they got to really experience firsthand, I'm sure in addition to everything else that you taught and they experienced that for this particular conference, they got to witness their teacher, their mentor being transparent, vulnerable, and available. And that's what yes. you're leading them to do in their marketing and in their authenticity as business owners and entrepreneurs. Yes. And there's another piece to this that just popped into my head. Um, this idea, now think about it this way. If I was there, I didn't want Therese touching my people because like I own them, right? they're my people. <laughs> they're my, it's, my people. Because there's away. only so many to go around, Julie, right? We know that. That's right. right. <laughs> there's only so many people. That's scarcity thinking. Absolutely. Right? When I am willing to allow people to self-select. And I even, there were a couple of people that I said, this is not the right program for you. Go talk to Therese, right? Because what that does is it opens. And when you're in scarcity thinking, you close down, you clamp down. Money can't get in when you're clamped down. So by being in this collaborative space with Therese and with um, another, uh, with our photographer that I bring in, when I'm in that collaborative space, I'm able to open more. And when you open more, more money is able to come in. So really part of what I'm modeling is this way of being in the feminine, but I'm also uh, modeling abundance thinking, which is there are enough people in the world that my people, the people I'm meant to serve will naturally find me and I'm not going to claim anybody else is mine. And the people that Therese is meant to serve are hers and there is a, a, an abundance of people for all of us. That feels very counterintuitive. Isn't it? To what we've I been know. taught I and know. what we're told. Mm-hmm. Uh, I hear you saying, and maybe this isn't the right phrasing, but I hear you both saying, we are putting ourselves out there in, in such an authentic, again, mm-hmm. uh, beingness way that we're trusting that the right clients are going to be attracted to us. That's the word, trust. Absolutely. You have yeah. to trust because... The, uh, the old way is you just throw stuff against the wall, just shoot for numbers. And then hang on to yeah. it. <sighs> and then get all grinchy with it. As opposed to, you know, Julie and I both understand that our souls lead us. This is a divine mission for both of us. So like she said, like we do, we do a lot of the marketing in sim- similar ways. Like I just did one with her people just like two hours ago. And it was imagine your people and pull them in on a spiritual level, like spirit, like literally call their souls into you. Tell them you're open for business. Be like, like I'm ready now, and see them coming energetically. Like, hold the energy of that. So that's the work. It all starts from the inside, and instead of a you know just some fake marketing plan, little blueprint thing, it doesn't work. It's interesting that you give that example. Since we did our thing together uh-huh. at the restaurant, even though we didn't have a long conversation around this, I've been hearing those messages within myself and recreating nice. that nice. for me and letting go of a lot of the stress. Like I have to show up and do what yes. I need to do to market and, and you know, put my brand out there. And I have to be in allowing. I have to be in exactly. the trust of it. Mm-hmm. Julie, we heard from Therese about how she got started. I'm very curious and interested. How did you land here? How did, how did you realize that this is your gift to the world? I, um, my first marriage was a 20-year abusive relationship. I stayed in that marriage because I had four kids. The first time I, I tried to leave, I went to an employment uh, counselor who told me I was worth $10 an hour. And I knew 
I mean, can you imagine that just crushed me? And I knew that I couldn't raise my kids on $10 an hour. So I stayed in this relationship until it was just unbearable. And I was either going to die in it or I was going to leave. Well, out of that, I started to work with um, both a shaman and a psychic. And I, I, I realized that what I wanted to do with my life was empower women. I had no idea how. I had no idea what it would take, and I'd never heard of the coaching profession. And I just started looking around. When I entered the coaching profession in 2005 and did my certification, I came out of it, and I was super excited because now I could empower women. But I was told that you market by finding their fear and their pain and making them really, really, really afraid and really pushing that pain and then telling them that you are the only solution, right? And I said, no, it makes my heart hurt. Uh -uh, uh -uh. It's so icky. So I had a little tiny coaching practice that I got clients by networking one-on-one and I was empowering women, but there was part of me that was still held back because I thought I had to be professional, right? So I created a business called Kick-Ass Biz Coaching and I taught strategy and I actually had a mentor teach me strategy. And at the point where I was a a few thousand short of my first six-figure year, I had a car accident and I was rear-ended and I couldn't work anymore. I couldn't do the 12-hour days. I couldn't work seven days a week. I couldn't drive myself. I could barely sit up, take a phone call from a client, and then lay back down on ice because my back was in spasms for months. In that space, I started to hear this voice say, there's a different way, and there's a better way for women. And as I started to listen more deeply, I started to bring my spirituality back into my business. I started, I actually sent an email. The first email I sent um, said, okay, nobody knows this, but when I'm on client calls, because my clients can't see me, sometimes I'm also doing tarot card readings and I'm using the tarot cards to direct it. I do? And, yeah. And, and I cried. I thought I'd just blown up my business. Nobody was ever going to hire me again. And what happened was I had just blown up my business and taken it a different direction. My income skyrocketed. I I'm having so much more fun. And now I do this combination where you have to have your connection to source. You have to have the spirituality in your business because otherwise you are working half blind. If you are only paying attention to what's going on on the physical plane, then you're missing a whole lot of information and a whole lot of power in being able to connect. I mean, can you imagine how many people you would have to go to and knock on their door and say, hey, are you it? Are you it? Are you it? Or you send this invitation out on the spirit plane, plop a couple emails out, and the right ones find you because they're already connected in spirit. Oh, isn't that cool? It's so cool. I know. It's like, it's like when she talks, your physiology is uh, like, yeah. oh, my whole body is like, like oh, she's I'm getting all zen on us here, Julia. Yeah. I am. I, I I'm I'm fascinated, and this really resonates with not only my personal and professional journey as well. So this is very exciting to now be you know connected with the two of you. When your clients have had an opportunity to be with you, Julie, like what's the greatest compliment? What is the aha for you when you know that that they are hitting it because you've helped again unearth some of this and help them create those or be in cadence with their rhythms. What do you hear back from them? What is, and you can, you can think of somebody specifically, or what's just that greatest, I'm going to use the word compliment for lack of a better word, but how do you know when you, when you've really made a shift for somebody? Okay. I love this question because for me, it's when we get to the end of their contract and they sign up again, (laughs) and then they sign up again, and then they sign up again. I've had clients work with me for four, five, eight years. Wow. And I, I, you know, I believe that at some point you outgrow a mentor, but when my clients are coming back over and over and over, um, you know, and they say nice things too, like, oh, that was great. And, but I think that's the biggest sign that you're being successful. It's when you have somebody who says, I'm not done yet. Yes. I have more I want to learn through you. 
I love everything that you've said, in particular, the fact that you believe that there is a time that we will outgrow our mentor. And I so believe that. Back to this idea of coaching practices, so many of us were taught that you always want to position yourself in the place of being the one who has all the answers or mm-hmm. or that one individual and guide who's going to always be there for them. And that just has always felt yucky to me. Mm. So my conversations with my clients have, have always been from the very beginning. Listen, you know, there's going to come a point in time that you're going to have this so right. down. <laughs> they don't that, need you. <laughs> that you're not going to need me anymore. And then from a marketing or a business perspective, sales perspective, then I also had to stand in confidence to also say, I want you to get to that point mm-hmm. because I know I've been able to help and be of benefit to you. But it also means I'm out of a job because <laughs> that's mm-hmm. candid yeah, that's and that's absolute. real. Right. And and you guys might need to clean this up for me. Um, but then I would also say, listen, if you would just continue to keep me in mind that as you meet other people who are having the same struggles and issues that the challenges that you're having, remember that I helped you get to where you want to be and I'd love an introduction. That to That's me great. felt so much mm-hmm. better because I am going to be at a job. I want to be out of a job with you specifically. And I don't want you to forget that I got to be in there helping you shift at an energetic mm-hmm. and real cellular level. And so I, I love that. And I've had like you, Julie, many clients come back year after year and work with me. And and then there's always for me this little gift that when they are really are moving on and, and they're ready for that next level where it for at least in my situation, it's beyond my my either bandwidth mm-hmm. or my skill set and ability. And and I'm good. I, I'm now focusing on Phoenix Business Radio X. So this really doesn't apply anymore because I'm <laughs> I'm now handing clients away, which yeah. is kind of cool. I've got two more people. There we that go. I, two more incredible yeah. souls that I can introduce. Uh, my folks too. So, uh, where do we want to go from here? Let's let's just keep the conversation going. I know that was a mouthful. Well, I for me, like I love that we need to work ourselves into being irrelevant. <laughs> so, so you know, the old days there would be um, bracelets. WWJD? What would Jesus do? <laughs> yes. And so, with my clients years ago, I, it would be WWTS. <laughs> what would Therese say? And what? Like from a cycle, because I was a therapist, so I can tell you this. Basically, that's called an introject. So in, in initially, it would be you come, to, Karen, you come to me, and I do your clearing, and then you go away, and then you come to me, and I keep doing it. And I keep, it's 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 because you come, I have the thing, and I do the thing to you. But my clients, because I use I use my intuition and pendulum, they'll they learn it, they learn my techniques, and then they'll be able to say like they're they're kind of collapsing or they're struggling. Or they can stop now and say, wait, what would Tree say? Boom. And I don't have to be there. And so that's an, like they've, in, they've taken in the essence of the work and they become their own healer. They become their own guru, if you will. And so that's, that's what good work does. Yeah. I've had people come back to me, you know, that I've worked with before and they'll come back and because I get really connected to my clients. So I'm like, you have to report back, you know? And they'll come back and say, oh, I had this situation and I heard you in my head right. Right. and I knew what to do. And that I think is, is one of the greatest gifts. And I will always say to them, you heard me because I heard what source wanted you to hear. And I've said that to mm. you, you know, and, and I think that, I think you're right. Working ourselves out of a job is a huge gift. And for me personally, um, the hardest part is not losing the income. It's losing the contact. Absolutely. But a guy get all like, oh, no, we are leaving. I know. I get all weepy. And yeah. I'm like, oh, do you want to stay longer? But again, that fits yeah. with this yeah. idea of abundance. Right. Th- this, this opportunity to be of service and trusting mm-hmm. that even though, you know, they've moved on, there's going to be somebody else right there or multiple people right there having the same, a similar need where we can be of service and an added value. And I, I'm the same. I, I just love on everybody. <laughs> most, every, most everybody. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and, and in fact, I've, I've always said to people, my greatest gift in business is that I really love people yeah. very quickly. And it's also been one of the things that I've had to really work through because I lead with love and friendship yes. and, and I've either sometimes been taken advantage of and other times people haven't taken me quite seriously. Mm. Uh, but I'm, but, but then they're not your people. Correct. Exactly. And I finally have figured that out. And again, it's just been glorious. So 
wow. So there's great collaboration. You each have your own individual practices. You had mentioned something a moment ago, Therese, when you were giving us that example, uh, that because the work that you do, especially now where it's crystal clear and it's get to the point in the heart of the matter, I would imagine that your clients who've worked with you for a while know when they need you. Mm -hmm. And that's how you've begun to shift and grow your business more recently, isn't it? That it is such a a, a quick diagnosis. I want to play with this word yeah, a little bit, sure, so correct sure. me if it doesn't feel right for either of you. But you can diagnose so quickly based on your skill set and your soul beingness and the connection with that individual. You get to the heart of the matter. And again, it can take just minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, so... Your mastermind group mm -hmm. is now created with that in mind. And the work that you're doing with high-achieving women also has that in mind. Someone like myself who, I've done the work, I'm in a really great place business-wise, and there's still that uh, yeah. crunchy, that sticky little, part, right. you know? So, yeah, so that. tell us a little bit about so mastermind. I'm as well, I'll, I'll just take for it first. I'm kind of in between the two worlds. I'm still in the old paradigm of people are buying um, session, you know, like, like contracts with sessions. And what I've shifted to now, Karen, is half hour sessions instead of hour long sessions. I'll do an hour strategy session in the very beginning just sure. to get to know, but like I, I'm ninja fast, ninja fast. And so we don't need more. So I just sell people, you know, two or three half hours a month and that's all they need. And the results are equally good, probably better because there is no fluff. There's no, and I'm attracting different kind of a market. I'm not attracting people that are afraid and, oh, I don't want to do, I want to do, uh, you know, I'm attracting women that like, get shit done. That's, that's my market. I get shit done. And so there's that model, but my fantasy, 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 this is a mastermind, but this is my private client. So my fantasy so if you look at high achieving women, like here's what Julie and I do for each other. We we talk for like every other week we have something scheduled, but two days ago I'm like, I need some Julie time, you know, because I was wonky. I was really tired, too much weekend and wine. <laughs> I was not enough sleep. And that's when it hits you, right? That's when you're like, oh my God. And so I was forgetting. And so I, boom. So I kind of have Julie on demand as she has me on demand. And so if you're a, a person that's just like, you know, like you, I don't need an hour a week. I don't need, I just need, oh my God, I'm holding myself back. Oh, that sale didn't go well. Oh no, I'm, I'm in lack moment. I, I, or I've got a big vision and I'm forgetting myself. I want to, like literally to be on call, on demand. And so you text me and just go, can I get 15 minutes? Boom. So that's what I'm moving to. So that's a, that's a it's high end personal client. The mastermind is called uh, Unleash Your Purpose. And so when I talk about masterminds, I consider it a container because a lot of people think, oh yeah, mastermind, a group of people. For me though, the magic is in the container. And I have had, I have a, I'm running a mastermind right now. I, I can't even tell you the, the stunning things that happen. So I get on and we're all in Zoom and it's a small group, like four to six. And that means everybody gets to talk and everybody gets really intimate. It's not like you know, those people that have, quote, masterminds with 50 to 100. Ah, oh, don't use that word. It's not a mastermind. And so all of my clients, they just come. I, I start by doing like a grounding. So like I just kind of do a channeled meditation, centering, grounding. And then it was just like, okay, go. And they they say, well, this is what I'm working on. And and I pick up my little pendulum. And I mean, it is it's so it's like spot coaching, but everybody benefits and everybody collaborates and everybody loves the other one up. And so I'll give you an example. There's a woman in my mastermind currently. She's a very professional woman. She's she's very highly acclaimed and she has so much shame. Now, nobody knows seeing her professionally, but I'm like, this is holding you back. This is why you're not in relationships and why you're not making the money. And And so I want you for the next two weeks, you're going to tell us every shame thing you like all those icky thoughts and so she every day posts in the group every day. Now, on one hand, who does that? You know what I mean? By the end of two weeks, she was like, oh my God, I feel so much lighter. I feel so much better. And, she, and the sisterhood comes, loves her up, gives her support. So that's how Julie and I, that's, we, we're very similar in our, in our, create a lot of intimacy and connection. So my mastermind is unleash your purpose because my goal is in six months, whatever that is for you. If you want to pivot in your business, if you want to make more money, if you want to show up more fully, whatever that is for you, because I, I can't define your purpose, we're going to unleash that for you. So, Wow. So that's your mastermind. Yes. And, and it goes back to what Julie had said, earlier, said earlier around community, that the two Absolutely. of you, everything that you build with your clients and professionally 
and personally, obviously, yes, uh, is around community. Love yes. it. So I Absolutely. love I love the kind of the new uh, the newness of where you're headed yeah, with this next you. level of, of your you. your coaching and your mentoring. Uh, we've talked about the mastermind. You still are working with clients one on one as well. Right. Very good. How can folks get a hold of you? Where Where's the starting point with you? Starting point is TheresaSkelly.com or my Facebook page, Teresa Skelly. Those should give you all the all the information you need. My, now I, I will say I will say I have old copy on my my website because I haven't re I've written rewritten parts of it, but I haven't rewritten all of it. And, I, and, so, and you're right in the thick of it. I'm in the thick of it. Beautiful. It's been a, it's been, you know, I, I'm, I'm, that's still germinating. Right. Yeah. So I, I mean, I can't, I can't tell you how scary it was. And this is part of talk about seasons and marketing to drop the title of business coach. Karen, that was just like, oh, because we have, again, that was my ego. That was like, I could walk in a room of professionals and say, oh, I'm a business coach. I help people make money. And I get credibility. People are like, oh, and now I'm like, um, I'm a guide for high achieving women. Like, like I took it. But she's going to say it stronger than that. No, I know. She, no, but that, Julie, that's no, how I was I when I first, oh, oh, when I, I first dropped it. And Julie helped me a lot. I, I was, I was just going to ask. Yeah. But it was, it was to like, like completely let go of everything I've been associated with my, my website, my name, my everything I did. And that's the abundance versus scarcity. Like, oh my God, can I trust that this is, as I always say, if it's, if it's yours to do, if you have the desire, the way has to be there. It's inevitable. Right. But we get like, but this has been selling. This is what I'm known for. Oh my God. And so for me to just go, okay, here's the line in the sand. I'm not selling business coaching. I I'm selling business results. I work with business women, but I let Julie do the marketing, you know? And so it's, that's been, it's, I'm in the middle of the journey. I'm farther along than I was a couple months ago, but I'm in the middle of the journey. So, and I think we're all always in a journey, which is why. You know, for me, the the deeper I go, the more I grow in my journey, having someone, the stuff comes up and mm -hmm. it comes up again. So having someone like Therese, where I can go, oh, look, here's this issue again. Can you help me dig deeper and, and resolve it at a deeper level? Business is the greatest personal development oh program you'll ever be in. Yes. And it just keeps going. So, Julie, how do folks get started in working with you? What's the entry point and where do we find you? So, again, my website, juliefouch.com. Fouch has a weird, strange T on the end of it. And then you can also find me on Facebook at Julie Fouch. You can look me up at The Art of Feminine Marketing. And the live event that Therese was talking about, um, we just got the contract. Yay. Oh, good. Nice. So um, we can announce that it's February 21st, 22nd, 23rd in Monterey. And we will have um, the first link to get early bird, early, early bird tickets within the next week or two. And who is that opportunity for? So for our listeners who are like, oh, I think I'd like to just you know, make sure I take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. who, you know that you're a good fit for that if what? You know you're a good fit for that if you're a service-based female entrepreneur. If you do some kind of coaching, some kind of mentoring, some kind of healing. I love working with healers. If you're frustrated with traditional marketing, if you're frustrated with being told that you have to do a free gift and then three webinars and then do a tele-summit and then you can launch a product. If you're, if you're frustrated with being told what to do and then doing it and it not working for you, then this is the place to be. If you are ready for new paradigm, if you are ready to be pushed out of your comfort zone and into the next level of where you are meant to serve your people, then this is for you. And if your body leans forward when you hear about it, <laughs> follow the body compass. There we go. <laughs> Interesting. That's really the gift and the benefit that women have when they work with you. It's physical, it's soulful, it's emotional, it's embodied, it's it's everything. And and really it just flows, doesn't it? I mean, mm -hmm. I I'm so thrilled yeah. that we've had a chance to connect today and just really sit in the brilliance of both of you. It's it's fascinating. Therese mentioned a moment ago that she, you know, is kind of working on, you know, the new copy and everything. And then she said, I'm, I'm leaving that to, to, to Julie. So when you're working with clients, um, not only are you helping them from, you know, the inside out and finding those rhythms and that cadence and, and when it makes sense to do certain things, are you also 
providing marketing service beyond that as well? Or is that just for I don't, special Therese here? No, I don't do their marketing. I teach them how to do their marketing. Got it. That's and what Therese so, meant by right. that. I okay. have this special process that um, I, I'm fortunate to have been certified in where we look at what are their childhood wounds. And then we go into those childhood wounds and within the childhood wounds are the keys to exactly who you're meant to serve, exactly how you're meant to serve them. And we know when we know how you're meant to serve them, we can position you uniquely in the marketplace and we can pull out the words that act like laser beams to attract clients. So I create for my clients this list of words. We do it through their wounds. I create the list of words and I tell them, wrap these into your marketing. And then we practice, how do you write marketing? How do you write a Facebook post? How do you send an email? And we develop a schedule that's right for them for doing that. But the cool thing that happens is as you pull all this information out of the wound, then the part of you that's wounded begins to reintegrate. And as it reintegrates, you become more whole. Now, the more whole you are, the more power and energy you have to put into doing your work and the holier your work becomes. And so we want to be in there. We want to be taking the gifts out. We want to be reintegrating and we want to be powering you up so that what used to take you like really turning yourself on to 100%, you can do easily at 30% and then have 30% to go play with your grandkids, right? And then the rest left over to um, enjoy your partner. That nice, huh? Which, it's, which is my life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. And I love that you both have shared about your own journeys and challenges because clearly that journey, the pain and the joy of it, is who you are today. I don't, mm-hmm. not, that's not coming out right. But I've, I've always been in true belief when someone keeps trying to shove part of their life out, you know, trauma as a child or, in, you know, in their early 20s or their teens right. or whatever yeah. point in life, a, d- a divorce that happens out of nowhere when we're 35, when we keep making that wrong about us, then what I hear you saying is we're denying the opportunity to be of service through that healing and through those wounds. Yeah. And we actually, because wounding is so difficult for us, we develop skills to avoid being wounded again. Those skills are the exact skills that your clients need you to teach them so that they can heal from their pain. So when we can pull out, oh, this divorce, this was traumatic, this was horrible. What are the skills I got from that? Like I look at my first husband and I think if I had married my second husband first, I wouldn't be the strong person I was because my husband now is just like, let me love on you. Like, let me support you. What do you need? Um, But I needed to have that person pushing me so that I could develop strength. Now I could be really bitter and sometimes am, but instead I choose to see the role that my first husband played in me developing the skills to be able to do the work that I do today. I've been blessed with the opportunity to speak with so many professionals, most of which are residing and and working here in Arizona over the course of the last two and a half years, male, female alike, those who I'm able to really connect with, and that's the majority of Mm -hmm. these professionals and entrepreneurs, they are the ones who are willing to give us a little peek behind the curtain really authentically and say, listen, you know, it hasn't always come easy. <laughs> or, you know, I lost my my family years ago because I only focused on business. Or mm-hmm. or I've had to learn several times how to manage money. And I, it, and, But they've grown in it. And I'm so pleased that really uh, energetically and even socially, our narrative is, is beginning to shift. Right, right. That, that yeah. we need people like the two of you to help us not only find the clarity, uh, to put our messaging out there, but also to make it really okay to be human and divine in the same breath. Oh, that's, so that's, well said. that's really I who we are, that. right? Yeah. We are human, yeah. but we're also divine. And if we keep ignoring one or the other, we're screwed. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Well, again, when I started, it was, you should wear a black suit and you should act like a man. 
And so back in the day, men weren't sharing vulnerability, right? So I, I got my adrenals burned out. We, we were working like men back in the day. And so when I crashed and burned, the same thing. It's like, I cannot do this any longer. And what our clients tell us is, thank you, thank you, thank you. But like Because it's like, if you try to put yourself on a pedestal and act like you have everything together and you've, you know, you know they don't want that. And if the ones that do, they're going to be bad clients because they, they want a false thing. Mm-hmm. So if you can show your humanity and show, you know, I, I've had in the course of the last three years, three deaths. And the last one was very difficult. And I, I would cry and call calls. I'd be with, you know, I'd be running masterminds. And my mastermind clients are going, we're going to put you in the center of a circle and pray for you. Are you that? And I'm like, I'm just like, oh, this is very different. <laughs> But, and I received it and it it was a gift to them. You know, Julie talks, you know, she had some family struggles last year and she openly would share that and it bonds your clients to you. And so, so I know it's almost counterintuitive, like, because we all want to position ourselves as I'm the expert and you have expertise, but you're the human, you're connected. And I think just the more we just be real, the more our people can be real and the more they can share their stuff and, and be just on the path with us. Mm. Love it. Can you believe it's already been a full hour <laughs> that we've been together? <laughs> it went so quickly. And I know that we could talk for, for many more hours, but I do have to close the segment. I want to thank both of you again for giving us the gift of your time and your not only your connectedness with each other, but also the, the gifts that you bring to your world. Uh, Therese Skelly and Julie Fouch, if you would both, again, share how we can get a hold of you. Where do we find you so that our listeners can, can join, sure. join in the fun? Therese Skelly, T-H-E-R-E-S-E-S-K-E-L-L-Y.com, or on Facebook, Therese Skelly as well. Wonderful. Julie, how about you? JulieFouch.com, J-U-L-I-E-F-O-U-C-H-T.com. Um, Fouch rhymes with couch. So you just put the F in there and then put the T on the end. <laughs> and then also um, the art of feminine marketing online or, or on Facebook or Julie Fouch on Facebook. And be sure to check out early registration and opportunity for, did you say a February event in Monterey? February event, Monterey, California. Everybody from the East Coast, you want to be here in February Absolutely. for yes. sure. And you'll get the two of us together. <laughs> yes. I'll be there as well. Yes. Oh, so yeah. Awesome. Great. Again, thank you both for being here. You've been listening to Phoenix Business Radio, broadcasting live from within the MAC 6 and Conscious Capitalism Arizona Business Radio X studio. Some media leans left, some lean right. 